Hey everyone, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah, and this video is another episode of my Fun Fact Friday series. This series is all about me sketching some animals and sharing some facts about them. For all of the sketches I create in this video, I am using reference photos of sloths just to learn their proportions and to help me illustrate what I'm saying. The first thing I want to get out of the way before I get started is that there are two main types of sloths, and they are referred to as two-toed and three-toed sloths. Now something that confused me is that all sloths have three toes on their feet, so why is there two-toed and three-toed? So those number of toes actually refers to its fingers. So even though all sloths have three toes on their feet, the two-toed sloth has two fingers and the three-toed sloth has three fingers. I will be referring to these sloths as two-fingered and three-fingered just for clarity's sake. So where can you find sloths? Well, sloths are native to Central and South America and they live their lives high up in the tree canopies of tropical rainforests. The three-fingered sloth has a tan coat and the two-fingered sloths usually have grayish brown fur. These neutral tones work really well to camouflage with the tree trunks and branches that they spend most of their time on. Not only do they match the bark, but green algae actually grows from their hair, which adds that extra camouflage with the vines and various leaves that they're surrounded by constantly in the treetop canopy. Camouflage is really important because I'm sure if you know anything about sloths, you'll probably know that they move extremely slow. So having great camouflage is really important so they can hide from predators that rely on sight to catch their prey. This next bit of info is just so weird and creepy and I don't like it. So two-fingered sloths can tilt their head 45 degrees backwards to watch for predators. And that's not even as weird and creepy as three-fingered sloths. Three-fingered sloths have nine extra cervical neck vertebrae than two-fingered sloths. And this allows them to rotate their heads about 270 degrees. And it's the stuff of nightmares. It's almost like owls. And now I totally wanna to make an owl sloth hybrid. And if you're familiar with my artwork at all, I love creating animal hybrids that combine similar elements of different animals to create some weird hybrid of the two. So definitely be on the lookout on my Instagram for that. Some of the photos I found of these sloths bending and looking behind them, they really do look like aliens. It reminds me of when parents would say that they have eyes in the back of their head. To say that they're always watching you and your siblings. Can you just imagine she just spins her head around like a sloth? I think I would be traumatized. But even though they can look out for predators pretty easy with their freaky neck turns, say they do get caught by an anaconda or a boa, wildcat, or a bird of prey or something, they do use their long, sharp claws and their sharp teeth to defend themselves. I might have to actually look up a video of this because right now it's really funny to think about sloths being aggressive because in cartoons they're always so lazy and happy-go-lucky. So it would definitely be interesting to see a sloth fight. And now I'm kind of inspired to make a character design for a really confrontational sloth just for the irony. It does make sense why they're always portrayed as this lazy and slow character because they really are. Sloths sleep 15 to 20 hours every single day and since they have a slow metabolism, they can stay eating in just one tree for several days before descending to the ground to climb up another tree for food. Also something interesting is that sloth's metabolism is so slow that they only have to poop every eight days. And apparently they only descend down trees to poop and then they climb back up. It's so interesting that they only go to the ground specifically for that. But hey, I guess we have bathrooms for specifically that as well, so. I guess in that way, we can all relate to sloths a little bit. As far as their fur, they have really thick and dense fur, which helps them keep dry in the rainy seasons because they do live in rainforests. They have an undercoat that shields their skin from moisture, and then they have really long outer hairs that hang down their bodies to provide any water with a natural path to flow off the animal. Now this next bit of info I'm about to share with you guys is super, super interesting to me, and it's kind of what inspired me to make the entire sloth video, because once I found this out, I started 
researching more about them, and this is what I came up with, so. You're welcome for this sloth video. You can thank the Animal Planet for that. So I was watching the Animal Planet, and I was watching this show with sloths, and the zookeeper was showing Taurus the sloths, and then one of them parted the hair where their ears are to show their little round ears, and I just couldn't handle it. They look like little tiny round human ears, and I don't know why, but I'm just obsessed with them. And I just had to draw it. So I did find some images of people parting sloth's hair to show their ears. And the images I found were all of really young sloths or baby sloths. And I guess it makes sense since keepers are most likely able to handle them more than more adult sloths. But yeah, you should look it up for yourself. It's really, really interesting. Like why aren't more people talking about this? It's like that horses with mustache video that I made a few weeks ago, maybe more. Because in that video, when I found out about it, I had the same reaction like, why isn't more people talking about this? Can we make like hashtag sloth ears trending on Twitter or something? Because more people need to know about this. Or maybe I'm just weird. Another thing that I flipped out when I found out is that sloths are the actual creepiest creatures in the entire world when they walk on ground. There's this video I found on YouTube that I definitely will link in the description below. It's about 20 seconds and it just shows a sloth creepily crossing a street. It's the stuff of nightmares. Okay, maybe not nightmares, but it's definitely unsettling to watch. Since their arms are just so long compared to their body, and since they move so slow naturally, it's just really unsettling. While I was researching about sloths walking, I did find out an interesting bit that while they can't walk really gracefully, they're actually really, really strong swimmers. And it's actually because of those long arms because they're able to paddle through the water really easily and it looks way more natural for them. And I mean, you can see in this drawing that I doodled of a sloth swimming, it just looks way more natural than the other drawing of a sloth walking. I don't know for some reason, but when I thought of a sloth walking, I just assumed they would walk like us on two legs and just have really long arms. But it's not really the case. They kind of just crawl, but like in a creepy way. Anyway, I digress. That's about it for this episode of Fun Fact Friday. If you've made it this far, leave me a comment and tell me if you think sloths are cute or creepy. Me personally, I used to think they were cute because I didn't really think about them that much. But now that I've drawn them so many times, and I'm starting to learn more and more about them and how they work and how they move. I'm definitely leaning more towards creepy. Now two fingered sloth babies are adorable, but other than that, when they grow up, they're not as cute. And then three fingered sloths, I just, they're, I, I don't know. They're just very creepy to me for some reason. And I feel like that's a really unpopular opinion. So if you disagree or if you agree with me, let's have that conversation below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a bunch of others about other different animals in my Fun Fact Friday series, and I'll have a link to that playlist in my description, so I would love for you to check those out too. Most of the facts that I shared in this video are from an article I sourced in the description as well, if you wanna learn even more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I really do enjoy making them, and it's really refreshing to make a video that gets me excited and hopefully inspires you to wanna learn more about the animals I talk about too. I'm always learning about animals, and when I find out something cool, I feel like I just have to share it, and art is my way of doing so. Like I said earlier, I am pretty inspired about that whole neck turning business with sloths, so I will definitely be making a sloth owl hybrid in the future, and I'll definitely be posting that to Instagram and my other social media. So be sure to follow me on all of those and all of those links are in the description along with the affiliate links for supplies that I use in this video. If you've made it this far, please leave a like and subscribe for more animal inspired art content. I upload a new video every Friday and my goal for 2020 is 50 subscribers and we're so close to 40. I think we're like one away. So thank you so much to everyone who's supported me so far and just sharing really sweet comments and also the feedback you guys have been giving me so that I can make each video better and better. I'm also always looking for suggestions for other animals you guys are interested in so I can make more of these fun fact videos on. So let me know any of that in the comments too. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
I'm using reference photos of sloths just to learn their proportion. If you've made this pot. <laughs>